Hello and here we are with another episode of Talking Politics on the Hindus YouTube channel. I'm Nistula Hebbar who will be taking you through some of the headlines uh, that made it uh, in the newspapers and in public discourse uh, in domestic politics. And this is a week which has had uh, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, activity with regard to international news, the Israel-Hamas war, but we will be concentrating our uh, episode this time on the five states going to polls Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, uh, Mizoram, and Telangana, uh, and very specifically to the BJP strategy as is being seen as unfolding uh, with regard to these elections. Uh, not so much for these elections, uh, if I may say so, but largely towards what will happen in 2024. Well, um, the BJP was first off the block uh, in terms of uh, bringing out its list of candidates, four in Madhya Pradesh so far, two for Chhattisgarh and one till now for Rajasthan. Please remember, I'm filing this report uh, or this episode of uh, Talking Politics on Friday the 13th. Uh, so uh, uh, as the rest of the week goes, we are expecting uh, Congress also to come out with this uh, list and BJP also to add to its list of candidates in all these states now very clearly uh, one thing that came out was that this is not just uh, a list of candidates for these elections uh, it seems to be aimed more at what is likely to happen in 2024 when uh, the country goes into general elections to choose the next central government to choose the next prime minister of this country. So BJP seems to have brought out a list to kind of do some housekeeping and to test drive certain ideas in terms of narrative, etc. also in the run up to the 2024 elections. So uh, not wasting any time, let's first go to Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, where the BJP in its list has fielded more than a dozen MPs to contest assembly seats. Now, in Madhya Pradesh, the three union ministers, Narendra Singh Tomar, Fagan Singh Kulaste, and Prahlad Patel, along with four Lok Sabha MPs, namely Rakesh Singh, Ganesh Singh, Riti Pathak, and Uday Pratap Singh, have been fielded uh, in these elections. The first three lists did not even have uh, the candidature of uh, sitting Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan. Uh, his name was announced in the fourth list. He was he's going to be fighting from Budhni. Uh, in Rajasthan, Lok Sabha MPs Rajavardhan Singh Rathor, Diya Kumari, Baba Balaknath of Alwar, Bhagirat Chaudhary, Devji Patel, Narendra Kumar, and Rajasabha MP Kirori Lal Meena supposed to have a lot of uh, support in eastern Rajasthan where Sachin Pilot also hopes to kind of gather his support. They have all been given assembly tickets uh, to fight these polls. Now, the large number of MPs uh, being fielded is seen apart from a way, especially in uh, Madhya Pradesh, of cutting anti-incumbency against the Shivrat Singh Chauhan government, which has been at the helm with a brief sort of interregnum uh, when Kamal Nath was elected uh, chief minister in 2018. So for a total of 18 years, Mr. Chauhan has been at the helm of affairs in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, the party, the BJP, is kind of anticipating there will be anti-incumbency. So they see this as a way of cutting some anti-incumbency against his face and uh, the team surrounding him, but also of creating a cohort group of state leadership and effecting a generational shift in both Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh away from Mr. Shivrat Singh Chauhan and former Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhra Raje. Uh, and uh, the list very clearly demonstrated uh, among supporters of Ms. Raje, like Narpat Singh Rajvi, uh, his Vidyadhar Nagar seat was taken away from him and given to uh, MP Diya Kumari, she's the princess of Jaipur and an MP from Rajman. And uh, Mr. Narpat Singh Rajvi is the son-in-law of Bhero Singh Shakhawat, former chief minister, former vice president of India, one of the men uh, who has been, uh, who had been very instrumental in building up the BJP there. So it's a very, very strong message which is being given out that Delhi is running things in Rajasthan. Uh, Olympian silver medalist and former union minister Rajavardhan Singh Rathor. Uh, he's been fielded from Jotwara in Jaipur district. And uh, there is again uh, a lot of uh, 
um, rebellious uh, tones being heard there uh, uh, also heard in Tijara in Alwar Bedam Sachor and Bharatpur's Nagar seat among others now the BJP to kind of uh, quieten all this down. It has formed an internal committee headed by uh, uh, Union Minister Kailash Chaudhary and he's supposed to address this issue. God knows whether this will get addressed or not. Or will we see a Karnataka slash Himachal Pradesh sort of a situation where the BJP is kind of pulled down by the rebels in its ranks? Or will it be able to, like in Uttarakhand and, some, and in, even in Uttar Pradesh, get over it, parties organization kind of getting over this thing? Uh, in both Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, it's very clear that Mr. Chauhan and Ms. Rajay, who are basically in the same, used to be in the same cohort group of chief ministers as Prime Minister Narendra Modi, have been asked to face uh, a prospect of diminishing uh, hold on the state unit. Now, the success or lack of this strategy, uh, or lack of success of this strategy, will go a long way in determining. Uh, how much of a say both these leaders, Mr. Chauhan and Ms. Rajay, uh, um, indeed the whole state unit and the way that the state unit kind of looks at tickets and distribution and, and, and share and power, uh, how, how much of a say all these people will have in ticket distribution in the 2024 Lok Sabha polls. It's a battle, uh, not just between the BJP and the Congress in these states, but between uh, the older BJP and attempts to create a new line of leadership in a new sort of BJP in these states. Now, in Chhattisgarh too, the BJP has fielded three Lok Sabha MPs, former cabinet ministers, and 11 of its 13 sitting MLAs, and as well as former chief minister Raman Singh. Now, Mr. Singh's entry in the list is interesting in that while the party uh, has told him that in the event that the BJP wins in Chhattisgarh, he will not be its chief minister. He has been tasked with helping the party to win. Uh, the BJP has uh, about uh, uh, taken out about uh, 43 out of the 85 candidates that the BJP has already announced for Chhattisgarh. These are people who have never contested on a party on the party ticket. Uh, so clearly, despite the inclusion of Mr. Singh, the party is determined to walk forward from his rather large shadow on the state unit. Now we come to Telangana. Now in Telangana, the BJP removed former state unit chief Bandi Sanjay Kumar. He's been made a general secretary in the national team of the BJP. And that position was given to Union Minister G. Kishan Reddy. Now Mr. Kishan Reddy is supposed to be somebody who is close to uh, the BRS leadership, the Bharata Rashtra Samiti, it's a ruling party of Telangana. And uh, this was seen as a sign that the party wanted to um, basically give a soft uh, right to the BRS. Uh, some There was a lot of talk that deals were being struck for the 2024 elections, etc. But party sources have told me that also meant that people like Etala Rajendra uh, and others who had entered the BJP uh, later and were not, like, they didn't enter the party through the Sangh route and basically were in the BRS or another political party and then joined the BJP, uh, they were clamoring. They were saying that, you know, uh, despite the fact that we've joined, we've not been given any importance in the state unit. Bandi Sanjay Kumar and the old BJP is still running things. So the BJP national leadership said, OK, these are the elections which are the best time to discover uh, who is who enjoys a lot of uh, support among the people. And so they made Mr. Rajendra uh, chairman of the election management committee and, uh, uh, and changed the state unit chief. And basically, this is BJP saying, have at it to the, uh, to the new uh, inductees uh, in, that, uh, uh, in, in the Telangana BJP. They want to see and they want to test whether the new blood will make a difference or should the BJP revert to the old flock of died in the wool Sang Parivar recruits. And now finally, the Bihar government's caste survey. Now, I was already talking about what are the changes that the BJP was trying to make internally in terms of its organization in terms of distribution of tickets candidates moving leadership around etc but there are also issues that the bjp will have to address in these very important set of elections the most important issue is how to deal with the bihar government's caste survey uh, the response of the bjp will be playing out in these assembly elections especially since the three hindi speaking states of madhya pradesh chhattisgarh and rajasthan have significant presence of obcs in the population now rajasthan chief minister ashok gelot 
announced that he would be undertaking a survey if re-elected and the Congress con uh, Working Committee's push for a nationwide caste census are challenges that the BJP will have to deal with in these polls and perhaps hone their strategy uh, in, 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 with regard to 2024 as well. In 2018, the BJP had lost the three big states of Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh. The result was read as a signal from the rural heartland, from the farmers, that there was rural distress, they needed help. If you remember in uh, Madhya Pradesh, in Mansort, there was a uh, situation where there was firing on, on uh, 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 protesting farmers, etc. And this prompted uh, the BJP government at the center, after the results and all had come out, to launch the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman. Uh, Nidhi, which was an income support scheme for uh, farmers. Now, what lessons uh, the 2023 set of polls will therefore spring up uh, is not just important for these five governments that will be elected at the end of the year, but for 2024 as well. This is all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching.